We're outside Gloucester Royal Hospital. Um, the workers have been here, union uh, reps have been here and uh, staff since uh, 7 o'clock this morning and they'll be staying until 11 and it's uh, one of several days of strike action that have been organised by the unions and coordinated by different unions which I think is, is really important that they are striking together and that there's greater cooperation. Uh, my name's Liz and I'm a health visitor within uh, Gloucestershire Care Services. Right, we're outside uh, Gloucestershire Royal Hospital and today we're here protesting against the lack of pay rise within the NHS. Uh, what was offered um, originally was 1% by the uh, pay review body. That was across the board for all of the countries in the United Kingdom. Jeremy Hunt said no to that. The other um, countries have picked some of that up. Scotland took it in full. What they offered in England at the top of the band, so if you're at the top of band six, that you would actually um, have a, a pay rise, um, but the rest of the um, bands would not have that. So basically that would equate to £28 and £28 pre-tax and it doesn't go towards your pension. Yeah, but it's divisive in terms that it's only giving part of the part of the NH staff a rise. What Jeremy Hunt says that the increments that you get when you rise through the band is actually a pay increase. Increments aren't a pay increase, they're actually about gaining knowledge and skills so that you're much more skilled uh, at the end of the day. Generally across the NHS we've been, um, haven't had any recruit recruitment. Certainly within health visiting now that has changed, but generally across the NHS that hasn't changed. We've, we've less district nurses, less staff generally, and we're not actually um, fulfilling the, some of the Francis report recommendations. Do you have a specific message for Jeremy Hunt or David Carroll? Yeah, for both of them. Go now, you've no respect for the NHS at all, or the workers, it doesn't matter what you say, you need to come out here and you need to see what we're doing and actually value the staff that you've got. For Unite, um, you can contact the Gloucestershire office, which is 01452 So midwives haven't had a pay rise for the last three years. They've increased pension contributions. The birth rate has gone up. There's an increased complexity in the care that women need. So women with diabetes and heart disease, say, that wouldn't have had babies 25 years ago are now having babies. The caesarean section rate, although we're trying to get it down, has risen quite dramatically and that means there's extra pre-operative and post-operative care that midwives need to give, yet the numbers of midwives haven't gone up and we are still 3,500 midwives short in England of the number of midwives that we need to deliver safe, quality care. Basically, the 1% pay rise was agreed by the pay review body. Um, there has been a pay freeze for the last three years, so in terms of pay keep, keeping up with the cost of living, it hasn't. And this pay rise is not consolidated into pay, so at the end of the year it just disappears. Same thing next year, another 1% which isn't consolidated. So in 2016, the pay of midwives will drop back to 2010 rates. I'm Julia Chandler and I'm Regional Officer for the Royal College of Midwives. <laughs> Uh, Caroline Jennings, uh, Community Mental Health Nurse working in Gloucester. Well, I'm a member of Unison and it's a four hour strike against uh, cuts in general cuts, but particularly the failure to, to award a um, one cent pay. Well, I feel it's very unfair because it hasn't personally affected me because I, I've had the one percent rise because I'm at the top of my pay band, but for people who are still progressing up pay bands. Um, they've been considered to that to have been their pay rise so they haven't had the 1% on top of it so it's that unfairness what, what does it feel like working in the NHS at the moment? How do you, how do you um, find it? Lots of changes, none of them for the better um, and I think we, I've also really noticed the change in other agencies, cuts in other agencies. Um, we have to do some work with the police, we do some work with accommodation. Um, I've really noticed cuts with um, the council in terms of what accommodation is 
is available to, to people. So it's just being, being a general sort of, um, thing that seems to be being cut all over the place. So lots of problems. <laughs> and what are you what are you hoping will will come out of today? Um, well, I would hope people would realise the effect the cuts are having on the not only the, the health service but the staff working in the health service and people's morale and how people feel about their work and um, we'll try and think that things can be done differently. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Chris Moore. Uh, I'm a member of the Socialist Party and one of the coordinators for Stradivance Cuts. I think that the health workers that have been out on strike have every right really to do that because the government offer of a 1% pay increase which in effect is a pay uh, is a pay decrease it's a pay cut um, if you take into account what uh, what the cost of living is and also I think 60% of nurses won't even get that because they won't get both a pay increase and their incremental uh, increases. So really, it's an insult to some of the hardest working uh, health workers, uh, public sector workers that there are in Britain today. And what we need to be doing is to be paying uh, our workers a decent wage for the work they do. Not only because they deserve it, but also because uh, it's a way of uh, helping to boost the economy as well. So on all fronts, and especially as the uh, MPs have just given themselves 11% pay increase, the idea that, uh, that many nurses who haven't seen a pay increase for years uh, can't even have a 1% is an utter disgrace. So, uh, so I, I'm totally supporting them. I think we need to build this to a real shot against the government, which will be a 24-hour uh, general strike, bringing in all workers. Who, everyone needs a pay rise. Um, you know, the top executives have seen their pay increase 180 times quicker than the average wage. So there's plenty of money there, it's just going into the pockets of those who already have it. I've worked for the NHS for 30 years and 22 years as a midwife and I think the morale is probably at the lowest I've seen it in a long time. Um, people are getting fed up now. We've had a pay, pay freeze for three years before and basically in effect this is another pay freeze for everybody. The independent pay review body uh, recommended an affordable 1% um, across the board to all NHS workers. They decided it was affordable, but the government have decided in their wisdom that it's not affordable and they will do, offer a 1% non consolidated pay rise for top of in increment only, saying that people with incremental rises are actually getting a pay rise. My name's Frances Walker, I'm one of the RCM stewards for the Gloucestershire Royal Hospital Trust and I'm also a lead midwife for the Midwifery Partnership team, basically I'm a community midwife. And how's it been going? And many midwives have been coming out on strike? Um, there's working? not a lot of midwives on strike today and that is because patient care is priority. It's a busy unit today, um, there's lots of babies being born so our priority is to maintain patient care at all times. Um, but there is a delay in postnatal and antenatal care in the community and in the clinics. John, the, the Royal College of Midwives hasn't been on strike many times in its history. I think this is the second time. This is the so. second time. It's actually the, it's both associated with each other. After 133 years, um, the RCM, the, the members have decided enough is enough. And we want to have... Um, what, the, what, what was recommended, um, the government were recommended a 10% um, pay rise by their uh, independent pay review body, which they are going to take, but they say that we can't have ours, which is also an independent one, and it is an affordable one. Um, have you got a message for Mr Hunt or Mr Cameron? Um, for Mr Hunt, if he could actually listen, come to the table, he's not even prepared, he's just washed his hands of it all, and he's just letting the NHS managers cope with everything. It's not fair on them, they've got a job to do, and they actually would be quite happy, I'm sure, to, to give this affordable, and I keep saying, affordable 1% pay rise. Mr Hunt, come to the day table, talk to the unions. Hey, I'm Danny, I live in Stroud, I support Unison, I'm a Unison member, and I support the strike. Uh, I think it's bang out of order that uh, they're not even getting 1% across the board, yet MPs can give themselves an 11% rise. It's no OK. Hi, I'm Paul Flynn. 
I've just come down from the northwest. I live in Stroud, but I have um, friends up in Stockport, a psychiatric nurse who's on a picket line up there. I pass on my way here, Mass Macclesfield District General Hospital. Again, another picket there. So very pleased to find you here, James, with your banners and placards. So good luck to the chess, all the staff who are campaigning for fair wage. <laughs> Hi, I'm Pete, I'm from Stroud and I support the NHS workers who are on strike today uh, fighting for a better wage for them, a 1% 1, 1 pay rise is uh, the least that they deserve. Uh, I'm Andrew Corson, I've come over from uh, Chartman Gloucester against Cuts today to show solidarity with the a great show of um, solidarity from the unions with 11 unions coming out today and uh, that's what it's going to take to save our NHS. All the NHS workers, uh, their pay and conditions are under threat, they're understaffing and uh, so much of this is a manifestation of the cut in real terms funding to the NHS as well as the cut in actual money uh, spent on health services as a result of the privatisation and all the administrative overheads you get from putting everything out to tender every few years or so. So it's, uh, it's been uh, another good uh, turnout as it was um, the last time they came out on, on strike and uh, I hope to see more of the same. I'm Sue Powell from the National Shop Stewards Network and I've come out today to support the striking NHS workers. It's an issue that I've been very actively involved in for several years. The NHS is probably the most important reform that was ever achieved in this country. It was fought for and it, we need to fight to defend it and that's why I'm here today and last time as well. I think the mood is actually better this time uh, than, than last, the last time they took strike action and I think it's very encouraging to see that it's not just the main unions but groups of workers who have not been out on strike in the past like the midwives and so on and I think across the board NHS workers are realising that they've got to step up and really defend the NHS, their jobs and the services that are provided by the NHS. And the National Shop Stewards Network uh, is involved in linking struggles and uh, is shown by the Doncaster <laughs> Doncaster Care UK, uh, it is possible to straight, take strike action and succeed and I think if you look at the Care UK workers you can see that uh, effects of privatisation, 35% wage cut which they have resisted through continuous strike action and it appears that they will have a settlement that is a lot better than originally uh, appeared to be the case. Uh, hopefully in the in the future we'll be able to coordinate support more support uh, for the NHS unions that are out on strike and I think it'd be really good if we could get the Gloucestershire Trades Council uh, to, to organize that kind of secondary support um, because the NHS does affect every union and every mem member of society and it's, I think that that's the next going to have to be the next stage that we broaden the campaign and that uh, strike action is coordinated and intensified across the public sector to fight privatisation and wage cuts and all the other uh, effects of this Tory government and uh, of course the previous governments. The fight's not over, it's scarcely begun and they should uh, expect uh, more union struggle because uh, people are beginning to recognise that that their policies are solely uh, for profit makers and not for the ordinary people and privatisation does affect everyone in society and it's um, something that will be resisted and I think one of the significant things is that lots of strike action that is successful um, is scarcely reported on in the main media. Uh, that's really a possible, you can say the same thing about the political spectrum that organisations like trade unions and socialists against cuts or uh, the Green Party scarcely get any mention uh, from the BBC and that's something uh, that has to be taken up but it, we also have to network and organise ourselves and work more closely together 
and I think so, that's um, solidarity is going to be the the answer to the Tory government. The, the working class are being uh, have, facing a barrage of attacks from this government, and they will organise the, the traditional Labour Party um, has failed entirely, and it's now up to the unions to take up that battle. And I am hopeful that they they will do so. Uh, my name is Fernando Parra. I work for the Together NHS Trust, uh, Foundation Trust in Tewkesbury. I'm a union rep, Unison. Um, I believe it's the second largest in the country. Um, we have a lot of people representing us today. Uh, we believe that this government, unfortunately, is missing out on many things. We believe that the one percent that we are asking for at this point in time is not enough but it's one little step towards something that is called justice but you see nurses that have been paid uh, miserable if if i can say the list miserable wages uh, for so long we haven't had a pay rise for four years and it's and, and it's going to continue if we don't act if we don't do anything about it then it's going to continue and the government is going to think that we're not doing anything about it. Politicians now are paying themselves 11% uh, of a pay rise, uh, which is a scandalous um, uh, thing to happen, considering that they're already earning lots and lots of money, and we all know that, and they are not representing us uh, in all aspects of, of, of the political agenda, if you like. Um, Cameron and his cronies, uh, and, and including the Lib Dems, the Lib Dems uh, have missed out so many points that unfortunately now has translated into this, um, this uh, anger of people in all uh, sectors of life. And, and now we have UKIP telling us Migrants and people like myself coming with skills to this country are not good enough. We cost the, the, the government too much money, but the fact is we're saving money. We're, um, we're working hard to, to, uh, to, to keep this country going, but also to, to maintain uh, sanity. Uh, we as migrants, and I consider myself a migrant obviously because I, I, I wasn't born in this country. I do understand what we will be missing out if we let the NHS go. Once the NHS goes uh, we will all have to pay for our health uh, which a lot of these people don't understand but me coming from another country I do understand. I know it's difficult to go and pay 50 quid every time you go to the GP. Uh, in fact, if you go to just the nearest country to us, uh, uh, you go to Ireland, and in Ireland you pay 66 pounds when you go to see your GP. Now, that is going to happen here if we're not careful with the Conservatives, if we're not careful with uh, their friends, because they will take over and we're going to have to pay for our health. Uh, and, and this is one of the reasons why I'm here today. And I've got a message for uh, Mr Cameron and his cronies. I think if they don't take their hands off the NHS, they will regret it. My name is John Ewers and I'm a retired member of Unison in the energy sector. I used to work for the gas industry so naturally I'll be here supported by Unison colleagues who are out on strike for fair pay. I think the way the NHS has been treated not only by this government but previous governments has been disgraceful. With the introduction, uh, especially the introduction of privatisation, I used to work for a privatised industry myself so I know a bit about the ethos and the uh, objects of what they do. They're just interested in profit as the bottom line and basically damn everything else. But I think we also have to say, you know, bring the NHS, so to speak, back in-house 
and we have to find some way of cancelling the PFI debts, which are, you know, uh, a great burden financially around the necks of many hospitals and trusts. A message for Jeremy Hunt or David Cameron? Resign immediately. Well, this is the, the second of, from what I can gather, is a, a programme of strike action. You know, and I, I hope they're successful. But I think the union needs to wage a much stronger campaign, including industrial action if needs be. Nobody likes going on strike to lose pay, especially near Christmas. But if that has to be done, it has to be done. But the unison leadership has really to take the hold of the nettle and conduct a strong, responsive and democratic campaign. And it's good, the little we've been able to do, and obviously straight against the cuts and other anti-cuts groups involved in, well, delaying the privatisation a few years ago with the court case and the campaign, I think was very good, but we've, we've, we've just got to carry on because otherwise we'll, we'll lose the NHS altogether. Hi, my name's Luke and I support the NHS strikes for the 1% pay rise because it's a valuable resource and you don't know what you're missing until you've lost it, so we shouldn't lose it. I don't want to be um, part of the generation that sees the, the NHS go and I think that, will, that is happening and I think we'll look back in 10 years, 20 years time and think, well, how did we let that happen? How did it go? And nobody did anything about it. So that's, I, I hope they will rethink things. <laughs> I would recommend anybody.